Saturday, Baylor College of Medicine and Friends of Baylor. Well, Lily's not here, uh, you know, because of that Newman. So, the next time you make one of your video messages, please have Lily give a call to her SAG rep, and we will discuss her future in the union. She's off there picketing with all the writers, and so I don't know when she's coming back. As soon as the writer's strike is resolved, I'm sure we'll see her. But now I gotta work on our new dressing room and the outfits. She's got a lot of demands now. Anyway, what a great week in the news. So uh, this is gonna be a hard one because you gotta figure out what's real and what's fake. So of course the CDC came out with very good simplified recommendations for the COVID season. Pretty much everybody over the age of six months and, and up should get a COVID vaccine. But not to be outdone, the governor of Florida as well as the Florida Surgeon General said they would suggest that you not get the vaccine, sort of going against the CDC recommendations because they said it was unproven. Well, each year we have a flu vaccine that is a booster. Each year it's unproven and each year it saves millions of lives. So I don't know what proof we need, but uh, who knows. But not to be outdone, not to be outdone, the City Council of Odessa in Texas passed what they called a historic uh, resolution that allows the city of Odessa not to be required to enforce mandates imposed nationally or by the state of Texas. So no one's gonna push anybody around in Odessa, Texas. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. And my favorite, of course, uh, once again showing why cruises are not the place you wanna be in a global pandemic. There was a stranded luxury cruise on a, on a sandbar in Greenland and it took a research vessel to pull it off of that sandbar. And it turns out a lot of, a lot of the passengers were infected with COVID anyway. So frankly, I think they should have just left it on the sandbar for a while. Anyway, uh, good news. The U.S. Uh, government has decided that you can get free COVID tests again. And so uh, if you go to covidtest.gov, you can order four tests. Now, I already have done that. It's incredibly easy, and I would strongly recommend that you all do that. They also have a new website that will help you with the expiration dates because it turns out the old tests have expiration dates that are probably too early so they're still really good anyway those are two really good developments uh, as you go into the respiratory virus season now if you look at hospitalizations the covid uh, it's going up uh, all over the world canada united states italy the united kingdom anywhere that they're reporting it you can begin to see the surge but there's a little bit of good news. Uh, if you look in the United States, hospitalizations have been going up, but if you look at emergency room visits due to COVID, they sort of peaked and it looks like they're beginning to come down. The one age group that seems to be really problematic and the Association of, of, of Pediatricians have pointed this out, kids zero to four years of age have seen this very big spike in, uh, in, in hospitalizations. And if you look at why, it's that group has the lowest vaccination rate. This is cumulative vaccination rate. You can see in the black area, that's kids under the age of four. And frankly, uh, it is really bad. Only 5% under the age of four have been vaccinated. So once again, evidence that the vaccine's useful. And if you've got kids that are, you know, the COVID's beginning to come back, I would strongly recommend that you get them vaccinated. Uh, COVID deaths have also begun to increase a little bit in association with the hospitalizations. It's up about 12%. It's not nearly as high as it was in the past, but they're still up. Now, again, there's some good news on the horizon. Uh, if you look at wastewater across the country, it's actually fallen pretty substantially. The viral burden has gone from about 55, 56%. We, we were watching the last couple of weeks down to 38% of the sites report, reporting a, um, either an increase of 100% or over 100%. And here in Houston, I think we've seen a, a real, the peaking and then it's come down. Uh, it's getting better. If you look at this past week, we're, we're down from what was 253% of our July 2020 number down to 166%. And so here in this region, I think we have seen a peaking of the of, of SARS, uh, COVID-2. Uh, in our region. Nationally, if you look at all the wastewater sites, uh, this is uh, September, it's, it's subtle, it's a, this is like four weeks ago and this is this past two weeks. 
There is a reduction in the number of red dots, which show uh, a falling number. But if you look at um, where there's still some red dots, it's mostly in the upper Midwest and the Northeast. <laughs> New York City, Westchester County, Janet. Beware, there's a lot of SARS out there. And actually, it's interesting, I have a lot of friends in New York and their kids uh, have a lot of colds, you know, uh, fall colds, and many of them are COVID. Uh, down here, it's, uh, there's also a lot of respiratory viruses, but many people are just getting a, a respiratory virus that is not flu or SARS or RSV, just another one of the sort of fall colds. So uh, it looks like we might have pe peaked in our region for SARS-CoV-2, but in the upper Midwest and, and New York and the New England area, it's very high. The BioBot data, we've gone over this. Another, this is the company that uh, does the reporting for CDC, does the analysis for CDC. And you can see they have shown also the same thing that the other wastewater showed, which is, looks like we plateaued. So what are the dominant strains? They really haven't changed. Uh, EG.5, FL1.5, and the XBB strains still remain the predominant strains. And I'll show you this again. These are the four dominant strains that are derivatives of XBB. And then the vaccine is directed at XBB 1.5. Now, you know, it doesn't look like a perfect match, but it's going to be close enough that I'm sure it'll be effective against these variants. And they've even said it will be effective against uh, the XB 2.8. So, you know, get your vaccine if you don't want to get all these variants that are floating around. Now, there are a couple of really interesting papers that came out. One had a big headline, oh, we're going to be able to have a uh, a, a blood test that will tell you if you have long COVID. Well, that, that's not actually what the paper showed, but it is interesting. There's a paper published in Nature that took 273 individuals and they looked at who had long COVID and who did not, and they did immune uh, profiling. And basically what they showed was that you could see marked differences in the myeloid and lymphocyte populations in people who had, had long COVID compared to the controls, and they also had higher antibody responses to other antigens, particularly Epstein-Barr uh, virus, which uh, causes mono and is, you know, has been associated with chronic fatigue syndrome. So it's very interesting that it looks like you know, in these patients that had long COVID, they have different profiles in their uh, inflammatory cells, but also seem to have uh, persistent antigens of, uh, of these other types of viruses. So you know, collectively, this means that we might be able to, down the road, figure out uh, a, a signature in blood that suggests long COVID versus non, it also potentially uh, shows some opportunities to treat people. Uh, the other interesting thing was the uh, patients who had long COVID tend to have lower cortisol levels, which uh, sometimes goes, goes along with um, uh, a sort of the lack of immune response. The other thing, another good paper was, does vaccination against uh, COVID uh, actually improve the long COVID symptoms? And it does. So there was a really good study. It showed that if you got vaccinated against COVID when you had long COVID syndrome, you had a decrease in the number of symptoms. Uh, your well-being uh, index score uh, went up and, and several uh, indices of inflammatory response went down. So it looks like that's a good potential opportunity for people who have long COVID to get vaccinated uh, and have improvement. So let's turn to the flu season. Flu is right around the corner. We're all waiting for it. You know, we, it, we know when it's here, when it's here. <laughs> Until it's here, we don't know. So if you look at it, this was last year's peak, and this is where we are now. And the, the circulating strains of, of A and B are included in the vaccine. So it should be a, hopefully a moderate uh, influenza season, and the vaccine match so far looks like it's pretty good. So. Get your flu shot. I'm getting mine soon, I think, uh, hopefully next week. Uh, and it's perfect timing because the peak, as you know, is uh, late uh, December in that, in that area. If you look at RSV activity, this is really, oh, I'm sorry, this is just respiratory virus activity reported. And you can see most of the respiratory virus activity, this was last year and this is this peak. Uh, it's, this is uh, mostly d determined by the green line, which is COVID. So most of the circulating respiratory Infections, you see people are either going to be COVID-related or a non-COVID, like upper respiratory infection. RSV is not around so much, and flu is not yet arrived, but it will be. So uh, one other uh, great thing about RSV is a lot of advances. As you know, we had a whole, uh, we spent a, a, an interview a whole day on RSV. 
lots of advances because we've never had vaccines. And the FDA finally approved a maternal vaccine. Uh, so this is very important. If for pregnant women to get vaccinated at RSV, the antibodies will be transmitted in breast uh, milk. And so that protects the baby for around six or seven months during this next RSV season. So if you're pregnant, definitely uh, get an RSV vaccine. Uh, they now have monoclonal antibodies, so babies who are born to pregnant women who did not get vaccinated, they're suggesting in their first RSV season to get one dose of the monoclonal antibody. And for kids who are in their second season, uh, only a monoclonal antibody for those that have some sort of uh, immune deficiency. So uh, new strategies are very important. And then for adults over the age of 60, the RSV vaccine is recommended. My sister asked me, should I get all of them? I said, Janet, just get everything. <laughs> everything all at once, so you can only complain about it for a little bit. If you get them three to spread out, I'll be hearing it for weeks. Anyway, I'd like to end today with some shout outs, some really great things. Uh, Dr. Carl June, a Baylor uh, College of Medicine alum, was named the winner of the 2024 uh, Breakthrough Prize in Life Sciences for his development of CAR T cell immune therapy. This is really a revolutionary therapy for cancer treatment that has really changed uh, the way, the responses of many tumors. Uh, so this is really great. Uh, he did his work uh, here and uh, joins Huda Zagby, another great uh, breakthrough prize winner. But it's a wonderful uh, award and congratulations to Carl June. Uh, also, his Research Administrator's Day, uh, September 25 was Research Administrator's Day where we recognize the important work of all the people who helped the scientists actually function uh, as researchers. These people work hard and have to deal with crazy scientists such as myself. So thank you for all of you what you do. We know, we know it's not always easy, but we couldn't do science without you. And finally, this is Advanced Practice Provider Week. You may ask what the Advanced Practice Providers are. Well, they are all the people who are uh, physician extenders and help with uh, managing everyone's health, physician assistants, nurse practitioners, certified registered nurse anesthetists, clinical nurse specialists, certified nurse midwives, and certified anesthesiology assistants. Thank you. They're very important members of the uh, healthcare delivery team. We've all suffered for the last three years or so of uh, COVID, and we really appreciate all your work. So anyway, congratulations to all of you, and I hope you have a wonderful weekend. I can't wait to see you next week. Thank you.